The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, hi, good afternoon, everyone. I, I hope you had a lunch. And my name is Desmond, and I'm very happy to have you all joining us, our webinar here today again. From the registration list we, we've got here, and uh, we have a lot of new friends here today for joining us for the first time. I hello, welcome, and thank you for choosing, jo choosing to join our webinar today. And for that, we will have to thank Red Art as well for all the assistance and also the generous support for, for helping us to promote this a little bit. So um, today we will be looking at view space system in overall, and we would like to share with you on how can a developer use it to manage our projects here. So as to ensure that the internet bandwidth is sufficient, then uh, it, it won't lag. So please allow me for not showing my face. Um, along the way, if we have any questions, then you please post it up and we will attend to all the questions towards the end of the session today. And so let's start. So over the past few weeks, as we have received some inquiries from our clients and our friends on how to manage our work progress and everyone is working remotely and also how to ensure things can be done online, especially for now when the ways we used to work have to change because of this MCO, I believe everyone here has a lot of feelings about it. So um, that's why we, we have this webinar session today and also next Wednesday to share with you all on how to move and migrate things online and to manage our projects in cloud with Buspace. So people might ask, um, what is Buspace? <laughs> Buspace is actually found in year 2011 after JKR and CIDB we collaborated to implement NETI. NETI means National e tender Initiatives. So after that, our CEO, Mr. Chu, and CTO in Jaslan, and our system architect in Jaslan, they designed and established a cloud-based solution for project management. Um, sorry. Okay, so this BQ-based online procurement system is tailored for construction industry and allow e-tendering process involving tender documentation, BQ preparation, exchange of drawings and specification, and most importantly, addendums and resubmissions. So moving forward, we also want client to have a system to properly maintain all the cost data in Buspace system and to accumulate and turn it into client's asset in digital era. So the reason why we need to adopt Buspace is because as all this time, although we use computer, we scan and save our documents to make it a soft copy, but we are merely just computerizing and digitizing our work. And this is what defines Industry 3.0, as you can see from the screen right here. In construction industry, we know our daily works involve a lot of physical efforts. That means paperwork and reporting. And our processes are not very efficient. <laughs> we, we all know that. And that causes a lot of lead time and waiting time for something to be done. And also, the, the flow of communications is always broken. And although we use some documentation, some document management systems to counter this kind of issues, or we use Google Drive to store our documents, but when it comes to record, tracking, and the security, it is still mm, quite insufficient in this case. So if we take a look at the change required for Industry 4.0, we're talking about Internet of Things. We're talking about machine-to-machine -machine com communications. Internet of Things increased the possibility of flexible working conditions regarding to time and location. I, I believe for now, and all of us, we, we all know that how important it is for us to be versatile in terms of the way we used to work. And also do it online so our business, operas, business operations can be more resilient. And, and since data is one of the most valuable assets we need to manage properly, therefore we need to have a system where all of our data can be systematically maintained. And most importantly, on-demand analytics can be produced for decision making. So with all this, we, we need to connect all of our project stakeholders in a sustainable network 
since Industry 4.0 also means profound changes in structures of organizations might happen. Therefore, to ensure the feasibility of business operations and data to can be collected properly, we have two powerful modules to assist our clients to do so. So as you can see from the screen here, in, in build space, we have now two, we have we're now two major modules. We call it e-tender module and also post-contract module. E-tender module handle handles mostly pre-contract activities, including BQ preparation, tender documentation, tender calling, tender evaluation, all the way until our award recommendation. So once the contract has been awarded, we can seamlessly extend our project data into post-contract module, where we can manage our progress payment, change request, change management, project scheduling, and also cost planning, as well as our project QA and QC. So to break down our, the, the features in build space based on our client's workflow, let us also take a look on the real definitions of e-tender. E-tender, fundamentally, if focusing on the entire process, right, it actually starts way earlier and includes the entire set of tender documentation all the way until over recommendation, as we had talked about just now, to be carried in only one single platform. And then when it comes to contract management, we're bringing in those parties who are contractually binded into the same platform for construction contract management. In another word, in e-tender module, we call tender. We allow tender to submit his tender or bid, and we evaluate the tender and award the contract in build space. Then in post-contract stage, we administer all the activities and keep all the records in one same platform. So ultimately, the records that have been generated along these processes will be captured as project cost data, which is very, very in important for all of us. And this can be very useful for decision making or even benchmarking our future project planning. So the biggest difference between digitization and digitalization is the way data has been gathered and used as a useful information, especially in construction projects where we usually rely heavily on the past project data to allow us to make decision or even do planning for our future project. So therefore, having project in accumulated in view space, we can allow the users to obtain real-time data for financial reporting, and that will save our time in terms of clerical words and physical effort. So with the compilation of this project cost data, we can also monitor what is the trend of the market and how we want to strategize our product portfolio. And the best thing is that all this data is centralized with controlled and secured access. So in, in this year, on uh, June, uh, BuSpace has actually revamped our management dashboard as what has been shown on the screen here. It gives us our users a very clear vision on objective idea on the performance in terms of organizational as well as each individual project. So coming up next, we will have our service manager, Zen, to walk us through some of the functions we would like to share with you today, including tender documentation, uh, tender preparation, tender calling, all the way to post-contract. So now, Zen, I will just let you take over the presentation now and uh, enjoy the show then. All right, thank you, Desmond. Yep. Um, hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, this is Zen from Gibspace. Uh, first of all, once again, I would like to thank you all for joining us today for the webinar presentation. So I believe uh, some of us will be thinking that for Gibspace or for even the system in the market, most of the system in the market that we actually have to install into the PC, we so called a licensed PC. And uh, we actually need to assess the system through the specific uh, PC with the license. But in build space, it's quite different because build space is a web based solution. It means that not only the developers who own the servers, for all your consultants and also the vendors or the contractors, they will have their own accounts to log in into your servers to do their works, like doing the BQ preparation or even the for contractors to do their handle submission. So, for what we can see on the screen here, actually is the login page for the build space. So, take for example, now if we log in as a developer user, 
if we ask the clients, if we log in into the system, so for first thing what we log into the system, we are able to see is so-called the to-do list. For this list, as, as per what the Desmond mentioned just now, shall we us just now that for build space basically allow us to manage our project starting from the pre-tender until tendering all the way until post-contract. And in between all these processes, we do have a lot of the reports and also the flow that required for the approval. That's why in the system wise, we allow the user to send for the system approval, so-called the e-approval. So there's no need for the hard copy signature to sign off. So as a client, if we log into the system, the system able to consolidate all the reports that pending for the user's approval listed down here. As we can see on the screen, we have the recommendation of tender form or even the list of tender form award recommendation that are pending for our approval. Then we can always click to direct into the reports to respond to view the details. So if we further scroll down a bit, from here we are able to see there's a chart in the display. Within this system, this server, how many projects are being created and what are the stages? So as we can see here, we got the numbers of 295 projects are in the design stage and how many projects are in the polling stage, the closed standard stage, or even for the post-contract stage. So by looking at the chart, we are able to know how many projects will be created and we can always strategize our business strategies from time to time based on this information. So if we, if we further drill down a bit, go to the projects here, under the project list, we are able to know what are the projects, we can see the list of the projects are created in the system and even their status for each project. And we can always filter based on the subsidiary. I believe because of the, some of the developer, they might have a different township. And for as a management user, for the client, we can always filter based on the subsidiary to see even within this subsidiary, this project, how many tender package are being created in the system. As we can see here, of two, and we can always create the sub packages in the system as well. We so call for the NSC, the tender NSC. We can always create it as an individual tender package. So take for, take for example now, if we want to have the simulation starting from the pre-tender stage, if we have a new projects that we want to call out from the system, we can always click at the button here at the top right corner. So for the add new project, Starting from that add new project, then we can start to input for all the project information, like the work category, the building, uh, even the different township or so-called the subsidiary, we can always select from here. And the project title, okay, for example, mm, uh, this is the project title. And even the site address, and even the state, the project description, and so on. And one of the good thing is whenever for our colleagues as a developer, when we, whenever we create a project in the system, we are able to use a different type of template, which is already predefined in the system as well. Like, like, like what we can see here, we have the template for the LA. Just for this project, we can predefine first and even the form of tender. We always can be predefined to reuse the template. So we no need to start to prepare starting from uh, scratch. So let's say, once we fit in for all the project information. The second part, once we created the project, we, we can start to invite our consultants to come in into the system, into the server to do their works at the tender documentation preparation. So as we can see on the screen here, from this list, we're able to assign, let's say for architect, their company, we just assign them, even for our QS consultant or add many and so on. We can always assign, assign them from here. And since for this system, we allow the user to have the, especially for the client side, to have the authority to grant access to all the other vendors user. So at the left hand side here, we can always define which party to in charge for the tender documentation. Who will be the parties that to call out for tender or even to do for the BQ or the tender documentation. So let's say for this demo, we will be assigning our, ourselves as a client to do all the tender documentation for the call for tenders. Then we can put the scroll down to save. This will allow us to have the security checkpoint or even the access right that we can control to run access to different parties or even different consultants. Right. So from now, let's say we already created a project in the system. And speaking about the collaboration, 
between the parties. Let's say if you want to communicate or if, it, if you want to do the information sharing between the consultants, we can always done in the system as well. So let's say if we want to share some drawings to other consultants, we can always go to the documents. So there's the project documents here. Let's say if you want to share some drawings, so we can click on the 2D drawings. Starting from here, we can start to um, create a new folder, take for example, we call just for drawings. Save. And for this folder, if you want to share or if you want to grant the access to other parties to, to uh, open or to review on this folder, we can always go to option and click share. Then we can take which party that allow, allow them to come in to view on this folder. Then we'll come up with this button. So if you want to share some, if you want to upload some attachment into this folder, we can just go to the option, click open. And there's an upload button here. We can upload and we can browse to our PC to upload some attachments and save. So the good thing is if we have all our documents to be well recorded in the system, as we can see here, the system able to record for each file, each attachment uploaded by when and by who. And in the system, we also cater for the revision. Let's say we have the revision for a certain drawings or certain attachment. We also cater for this one. So this part will be the documentation sharing. Another part will be the communication. If we want to communicate with the other consultant, in the system, we have the one modules that we call the request form information. As compared with conventional practice, normally for one project, we might have hundreds or even the thousands um, RFI, we so-called RFI for one project. But in system, not only for developers, for your consultant, they can always come in here to issue the new RFI if they want. They can issue a new RFI, and then they can further clean up uh, with the subject, let's say, request for job aids. And then once a comment, let's say, please share um, drawings as soon as possible. Take for example. Then we can further direct this RFI to which party, and we can further attach any attachment if we want. Upload. And we can post by clicking at the send button. So once we click, the good thing is if you have all the RFI to be recorded in the system, first thing we keep all the reference, easier for us to keep track the trace for the past RFV that we sent up, and the date or even the title, who is the issuer for the RFI, and even the deadline to reply, how many days left, depending, and the status as well. Is it either still pending for the reply or is it already been answered by the other consultants? And if we back to just now the project, we back to the project dashboard, whenever we create a project in the system, for each of the projects, there's will come up for this checklist. So based on the checklist, we can see on the screen here. So basically, we are able to know um, what are the tasks that, or what are the documents that are still pending for, um, is still under preparation, or is it being finalized yet? As we can see from the first step, even the BQ has been prepared yet, even the tender documentation, is it finalized yet, form a tender, or even certain forms that we call the recommendation of tender form, or the list of tender form, calling tender form, as is it have been submitted and get approved yet? So we can always come in here to monitor on our pre-tender project press. So let's say we start for number one. If we want to pre uh, prepare the BQ or even our consultants, they want to prepare the BQ in the system, they can always go to the top right corner here. It will access into our Big Space Pro. So basically for Big Space Pro is a sub module um, in the system. It's basically is the BQ system where we keep for our cost, data, uh, cost information and so on. So when it comes to the BQ preparation, basically we have two methods for the preparation. The first part will be the import the BQ from the library. In yes, uh, the build space actually has the library. So it means that for clients, if you own the build space, we have the own set of the library where you can keep all your BQ description and even the details. So for the new project, you can always import just the description to standardize on your BQ format. So another method will be import from the Excel format. I, I, I would believe that for most of the QS, they are still prefer to prepare the BQ in the Excel format. That's why in system we provide the flexibility 
where they, they bundle us on their BQ, they can always import into the system as well and further call out for tenders. So let's say from here, before we start to prepare on any BQ for this project, let me to show you a little bit on our library first. As I mentioned just now, under Build Space Pro, we have the library module, we call the library manager, and we have the BQ library. So for this BQ library, we can always come up different set of the BQ format as a template. Take for example, for SMM2, we can double click. So from the, this level, we can list down all the elements, like the prelims, uh, even the concrete works, the brick works, and so on. Take for example, if we want to further come up the details or the item description, we can always double click and we can see, we can come up all the list of the BQ description. So if we have our own set of our library like this as a form uh, as a template, so for every new project that we created, we can always import for all this description as our BQ as our new set of the BQ. So if we go back to just now the BQ, take a shortcut here. Let's say back to just now this project. If we want to create the BQ, um, the BQ from the library, just import from the library. We can always go to the app view, normal view, by inputting with the, the view title. So let's say for this view title, we can always double click. Once double click, the second level will be the element level. Starting from this level, we can always import from the library. That's the button here. Let's say if I browse to the element list, then we can import, we can select which one we want to import, or import all together, click import. So if we want to further prepare on the item level, itemize, the BQ itemize, we can further double click, let's say frame, and we click the import items button again, and we can browse to our library, let's say SMM2, concrete works, and we can click to select which item we want to import. So this will allow us to standardize on our BQ format, and we can always um, ask our consultant to do in this approach as well. So also easier for them to come up with the BQ description. And for the quantity for the BQ, they are also got two methods. It's either for the user to manual key in, or for user if they want to do some uh, simple take, taking off, like a measurement, they can always double click, then you will come into the taking off sheet. So from here, let's say I want to uh, do some simple measurement. Let's say for the blank with that then it will always come up with the total automatically. So from this quantity, if we back to a level, go back to a level, then we can see the quantity will be showing in the blue colors, means that there's a sub-level calculation inside with the taking of measurement. And this will be the first method on how the user, they go to prepare on their BQ. Another part will be the import from the Excel. So let's say now if I create another view, let's say we call view number two. For this view number two, if we want to further import, we, let's say we already have the BQ in our Excel format and we want to further import into the system. So let me open the sample Excel. Take for example for this one. Normally for consultant, they will prepare the BQ one element in one sheet. So that's why you can see there are multiple sheets here. And if you want to import, we only have to do the minor adjustment. Starting from, let's say if I back to the system, we can always import the uh, the BQ from files from the Excel. Let's say if I browse to the Excel file. Starting from here, we only have to do the mapping. The mapping will be done like, let's say if I show a sample. Column C will be the description. Column D will be the unit and the quantity. And even if the consultant already come up with the rates, the so-called the PTE, the budget, we can always import as well. So if I back to the system, this question will be column C to column C, unit column D, quantity column E, and weights is a column F. So, and click import. So the system will analyze for you for all the elements, means the different sheets from the Excel to be imported, and we can, a system will calculate for you how many item counts when you import. So let's say if I want to import all, import with the quantity, with the weights, and click import. And so that's it. So this is how we import from the Excel. If we can double click, second level, we can see all the elements. If you want to further see the details, we can always double click to see all, all the items. 
even for the different elements item, always see from here. So by doing this, it will be easier for the consultant to prepare on the BQ. Well, if it, we also always can always um, standardize on our BQ format as well. So let's say for the consultant or even for our colleagues already finalized on our BQ, and we are ready to call the, BQ, uh, the tender based on this set of the BQ, then we can always click at this button, publish tender. Once published, actually it will lock down as a set of the finalized BQ that we're ready to call. So any further amendment will be treated as the addendum later on there. So later I will show on the details on the addendum part. So if we're back to just now the dashboard, the refresh, let's say we already finalized on the BQ side. When it comes to the tender documentation, like let's say if you have any drawings or appendix and so on, for tender documents, we can always hold it here. In the document, we can see the list of the folders and like the specification, preambles, appendix, or even some drawings. If they want to upload as an attachment, we can always go to open. It's similar step with like just now what, what we showed just now. We can always add files and we can browse. Let's say these three uh, attachments as a drawings, we can upload and so on. And of course, it will keep track for all the log, like when we uploaded, by who, and so on. And another part for the tender documentation is the form of tender. If we want to finalize on a form tender, under the same page, the tender documentation, we have the form of tender here. So as I mentioned just now, during the project creation, for each of the project, we can always select the form of tender template first to pre predefine the uh, form of tender template. So for every project, if you want to uh, amend or if you want to preview the template for the form of tender before, before we do any editing amendment, we can always preview first. So we can see this is the template for the form of tender. So if you want to further amend the clause or even the content for each clause, we can always go into the system, click edit, and direct just type to edit. We can always type to edit here. So if we want to add a new clause in between, we can always add a new clause, even become a subclause, or even if you want to remove, also can. So this is how easy for the consultants to prepare on the form tender in the system as well. And let's say as a client, if you want to drop out the tender list, um, even the input, how to propose our calling date, uh, even the closing date information, we can always go to the recommendation of tender form. Starting from the recommendation of tender form, we can start to propose when is the tender uh, calling date for this tender and the closing date for this tender. Let's say next, uh, next week and even what time we can set from here, 2 p.m. And we can input for any other information, and the information like completion period or even the procurement methods. Is it either the design view, single bit, two bit, and so on. I believe for some of the developers, they might practice in the two bit means that for this tender, not only to call out to require the consult, uh, contractor to submit their pricing, we also require the contractor to submit on their technical as well. So that's why, let's say if we pay for the budget, set session, that's why from here we have three checkbox. Let's say if we want to allow the contractor to propose their own completion period, that an alternative tender, you can always click this one. And if uh, this tender, if you want to call out like two bit, not the commercial, we, we want to include with the technical evaluation as well. Then we can always take this one, then it will come out two closing date. One closing date would be for the commercial, another would be the for technical. And the good thing is, if we call the technical um, tender in the system, we can always define the template for each of the technical evaluation criteria. Um, this part I will show later, when during the tender submission, we can see all the criteria and whenever the contractors that they submitted their technical evaluation, the system actually able to calculate the scoring for them automatically. This part will be, we can show on the details later. And let's say we already say for all this information, at the bottom part here, actually we can start to um, list down all the potential tenders. To list out the tender, uh, potential tenders, we can click at this button, select contractors, and we can further filter the contractors from the contractor pool list. Okay, for example, for this tender, we want to invite 
for these three contractors. And then we can further save. Whenever we save and list down the potential tenders, the status here will always become pending. Pending means that we still don't know yet or we still haven't get their interest whether they want to participate or not from these tenders. That's why in the system we allow the user to send out the expression interest email to the contractors, to these contractors. So we can always click at the expression interest and further type our email content as say, um, please state your interest for this tender participation. And then we can further preview on the content, select the recipients and send. Once we click send, the system actually will send out the email to these three contractors. So now let us um, switch to the contractor view. If the contractors receive the email, take for example, from here is the contractor's email. If contractors, they receive the email, like this one, a special interest, they can further click in and then they can see on the, um, the, info, the email content here. We can, they can see from which project, and the date, uh, date for the tender calling, just the tentative one. When is it closing? When is it? And if a contractor, they want to reply, let's say they want to participate, then there's the link at the bottom here, you can click. And from here, they will come up two options. Either they want to participate, yes or no, they don't want. So let's say if they want to participate, click yes. So this is how the contractor, they can reply their special interest through the email. And if we back, if we switch back to the client side, the uh, client's perspective, and if we refresh, whenever the contractors they reply the email based on special interest, then the status here will automatically become yes or no. It will auto update it. Or even for some contractors, they might verbally inform, they call to the office or verbally inform they want to participate. As a client, we always can set yes as well. So let's say we're this finalized on this form, we can always submit for our management level for approval. That's why the, this form we are able to select for the verifier for the approval. So take for example, this form will be submitted and already get approved. Then we will be proceed, proceed to another form, the next form that we call the list of tenderer. So basically for list of tenderer will be similar with the previous form, it just we come up for this, the second level of form is for higher level of the people, uh, for the colleagues to come in to verify for everything. So let's say in this form, they want to further add in for new tender, they can always add in to send out special interest again. Or if they want to remove the contractors that have been proposed from the previous form, they can always delete as well. So let's say for this form also get approved, then we will proceed to the last form before we call off for tenders. So during the calling tender form, we have to finalize on the calling date and the closing date. And the bottom part, we can actually send out the tender invitation to the contractors as well. So for this tender invitation, we can further draft our email content and then preview, send to the contractors. So let's say we already finalized for all our tender documentation and we are ready to call, then we just click at this button, submit. When the calling form, when the calling tender form has been submitted and get approved, then the system here, as we can see on the top right corner here, you can see the project status will change to calling stage. Means now the contractors they will receive the email about the tender participation, then and they can actually come in to do their bidding or even the tender submission. So now let us switch to the contractors view to know how easy for them to do their submission in the system as well. So if we log in as a contractors, but first, if we go back to the contractor's email, whenever we call out the tenders, for contractors, they will receive the email, like just now we send out for the tender invitation. And even when the tender is called out, they will receive the email called e-tender message notification. When contractors, they open up for this email, they are able to see all the details that the, your company has been invited for the tender exercise and for which project, and then when is the starting date, closing date, and so on. So for contractors, if they want to do the pricing, if they want to uh, do their submission in the system, um, they can always click at this button as a shortcut to the, to the bid space system. 
let's say from here, since I mentioned just now, for all your vendors, not only for clients user, for all your vendors like consultant contractors, they will have their own ID to log in as well. So for contractors, basically they have six steps to do their submission for the tender submission. The first step will be logging into the system. But this one will be shortcut if I repeat from here. Let's say the first step is to log into the system. And the second step will be just browse to the project to open the project. So, but for contractors, they only can see the project that we assigned to them only. Means that they only can see the project that they are participating of tender. That's why you show the st uh, status here in the calling tender, or even the projects that um, already being awarded. That's why you can see in the post contract. So for just now, the project is still under calling tender. The second step will be just open up the project. So for the step number three, will be download for all the tender documents, like the drawings and so on. To download, just go to the documents and the documents. Then they can see all the folders here, and they can open up for one of the folder. Click the file name to download, as simple as that. Or if they want to download for, uh, into a one folder, they, they do want to download individual, they can actually just to click to download as a folder. And for step number four, if the contractors, they want to view their BQ, BQ no need to download from the system. They can actually directly view the BQ and do the pricing in the system. So to view the BQ, they can just go to the top right corner here. There's a yellow button. It will actually divert them into the BQ system. From this BQ system, contractors just only have to go into the BQ up to the item level and then further key in the rates here. Whenever they key in the rates for the item, the system will auto calculate for the brand total as well. So this will also minimize on the arithmetic errors for the contractors when they key in. So this is how the contractors they done all the they do all the pricing on the BQ and so on. And if contractors they already done their pricing and they are ready to submit their BQ, they can always click at this button, submit tender. Once they click, as we can see here, the tender has been successfully submitted. So for contractors, if they want to view the details of the submission, they can go back to just now the e-project or they can click this button, the shortcut, back to the e-project and click the submit tender. From the details here, as we can see, even the system will always have the checklist as a guidance for the user, especially for the contractors. When they come into here, they are able to know what are the documents they need to submit. Let's say they already submitted for their tender rates. That's why if I scroll a little bit, they can see the tender amount, how much they submitted, and they can bring out the form tender if they want. This will be the step number five, to bring out the form tender. To sign off and then to update again and even the amount will be automatically updated for the contractors so if we refer to just now the checklist let's say for contractors already done their commercial submission and if they want to submit their technical evaluation as well so from this checklist we can see there's two technical evaluation submission one we call a form another we call the attachment for the form so this is the template, as I mentioned just now, for clients, we can always predefine the template for our technical evaluation. And actually each of the criteria, each of the questionnaire here, the backend really have, consists with the scoring. So whenever the contractors, they fill in to answer for all the criteria, and when they submit, system actually will auto calculate the score for them based on their submission. And another part is the attachment. For attachment, for contractors, they are uh, required to upload based on the criteria that are also predefined by the client as well. We can always say which one is the mandatory and which one will be the uh, optional or the supporting documents. So for contractors, they only have to upload accordingly. And then once they uploaded for all the attachment, and click this button. So that's it. This is how for the how easy for the contractors to do to do uh, on the tender submission based on the commercial side and even the technical side. So this part will be the contractors when they're doing the submission. So now if we switch back to the client side, to the developer side, let's say for your contractors, 
already done their submission based on this standard. And of course, as a client, we can always have the right to um, revise on our closing date. Either we want to extend our closing date or if we want to set the tender to close, a client has the right to do it. So let's say if we set the tender to close, let's say if we set, let's say the closing date is, um, is on today, 2 p.m., for example. And then if we further extend, but whenever we click this um, extend button, whenever we extend or we uh, amend our closing date, the, the system will send out the email notification to all the contractors. So they are able to know the latest closing date. When is the latest closing date? So let's say now the tender is already closed, as we can see here. Even as a client, even as we own the server, when the tender is closed, we cannot directly view all the results submission by uh, contractors. So let's say for the tender, uh, for the tender opening, actually we split into two parts. First part will be the technical opening. Another will be the commercial opening, so-called the open tender here. Let's say we start with the te technical opening. Under the technical opening, let's say the tender is not yet opened by the tender opening community. As you can see, the status here is shown not yet open. As a client, if the, if the tender is not yet open, if we click inside, we still cannot see the results that submitted by the contractors. We cannot see the result by the contractors. So what we can do is, as compared with the conventional way, when going through the tender opening process for all the tender opening community actually have to sit down in the meeting room to witness for the tender opening process. But in the build space, it's different. We can send out the system opening approval to each of the community. That's why we have the verifier here. We can assign, we can assign multiple person for each of the community. Or let's say for this demo, I just assign one person. Let's say for this person to open for this tender open, uh, technical opening. So whenever we click submit, whenever we assign the verifier for the tender opening, then system will send out the email notification to the person to this person and this person will receive the email notification or if they log in into the system whenever they log into the system then as i mentioned just now we will always come on this one to do this it will list out all the pending approval for the user then from here the first thing we can see that this project is the technical opening pending for our approval we can always click view to go inside to further approve or reject let's say approve and the tender will be open for once all the um, verifier has already approved on the tender opening process. So let's say now the status is already open. And if we click to go inside, then we are able to see the scoring for the contractors, even the result submissions for the contractors. So for the commercial side, we also have to run through another round of the approval again, just for the tender opening for the commercial. But now, allow me to open up another project which have the more, which have the more detailed submission with a more comparison, more comprehensive comparison based on the tender submission. Let me open up a sample project. Take for example, <clears throat> for this project, is still in the same status, still cold standard. If we click inside, so if we back to just now the technical opening. For the technical opening, we can see for this one, we also already opened. And we can see there are four completed tenders. Then we can click to go inside and we can immediately see all the scoring. And the scoring actually will be automatically calculated by the system based on the contractor submission. And of course, the criteria, the score will be predefined by the client first, as I mentioned just now. So whenever the technical has been opened up by the tender opening community, then as a client, we can all immediately go to the report here to review on the detailed submission for each of the contractors based on their scoring. We can always drill down to the details level, level key management personnel. So we can see each of the columns, columns here represent for each contractors and their scoring for how, what is their scoring based on their um, submissions. So this part will be the technical part, uh, technical side and of course, 
Whenever we get the results, the scoring for each of the contractors here, we can always submit a form with so-called technical assessment, assessment form to help us on to shortlist all our contractors based on their scoring. That's why we have this one technical assessment form. For this technical assessment form, we can always pre prepare. Let's say who uh, which contractor actually passed from the technical evaluation and which contractor actually disqualified based on the technical evaluation. Uh, evaluation. Then for this form, we can always submit for the approval. And the good thing is, all the approval that we send out from the system, we can actually keep all the law, who actually approved by when and so on. So this will be, this part will be the technical opening. As I mentioned, for the commercial side, we so-called the open tender will be the same. Let's say for the commercial side, um, the status also open already. We can always click in here whenever the tender has been opened by the authority. Then the for client side, we can immediately see all the comparison, how much the base tender, the tender amount is submitted by each contractor. So we can see the amount here. We can immediately go to print out for the tender opening form. This one we can print out, and the, actually you follow the sequence, the highest, uh, sorry, the lowest to the highest accordingly. So this part will be just the comparison between the tender amount. So as um, if you want to further compare in the details, let's say for the BQ weeks comparison, compare based on the BQ. So the good thing is system, we no need the user to manually go to do all this kind of comparison because whenever the tender is open, system actually will auto tabulate out the comparison side by side. As we can go back to the big space pro. From the same project, if we click this one, view tenders, then we can see for this project, let's say we have five BQs, and then we have our PPE, our budget amount, and we have the submission rates for each contractor. All this info will be auto tabulated up from the system whenever the tender is open. And if we double click, go to the details level, the item level, so if you scroll to the right, so we can see the submission details rate for each of the contractors accordingly. And the, another good thing is, since in the system-wise, we allow the user to standardize on, our, on the BQ format. So whenever we want to compare, not only just to compare the, uh, the rates from between the, between the tenders, if we want to compare the rates based on our past project with the similar items, we can always have the historical rates here. We can double click. Then the system will actually filter down for you with the same item description, how much that we actually awarded from the past project. We can see from this project, we awarded for this rate. Then we can save. Then we come out this comparison. So this will be as a benchmark comparison for us to have the, the benchmark to compare side by side among the contractors rate. And of course, all this comparison can be exported in the different format like the Excel file or even for the PDF format as well. So let me have a quick show you a little bit. If you want to export like just now the Excel file, we can always browse to our reports module, refer to just now the project. Let's say if you want to print out a comparison based on these three contractors, for example, and we can further select which view we want to print out, even which element we want to print out for all the items. We can always go to here, select lowest to highest to print out. So from here, we have two options. Either we want to ex um, print out in the PDF format or if we want to export in the Excel format. So take, for example, if we export in the Excel format, open up the Excel. Then we can see the system actually will analyze for you based among the comparison among the contractors, which one will be the lowest, which one will be the highest. The lowest will be represented in the green color and the highest will be in the red color. So this kind of the reports will be automatically generated from the system whenever the tender is open. So if we back to the system, the e-project here, so for this part, when during the tender close, um, we also able to do the, let's say if you want to award on the, the tenderers after we've done all the evaluation. In the system wise, we are able to ask our colleagues to prepare on the reports that we call the award recommendation. 
can be done in the system as well. So for our colleagues, you can actually come in here to draft out all the, uh, the content for the reports. And the good thing is, if we prepare our reports in the system, certain information like the table form here, we can see the status for the participants or even the original tender summary, all the details here actually can be pulled out from the system. We no need to use the P1 by one for all these details. Like the comparison, table form, even resubmission one, P, uh, the PD versus award, all this information actually can be tabulated out from the system. So another good thing is once we're done for all this report, we can always submit for the system approval. That's why we keep all the log. Who actually approved for this report? And another part is, let's say if you want to prepare on our letter of award, will be the same one. Your colleagues will actually come in here. Then another, the good thing is, as I mentioned just now, whenever we create the projects in the system, we can always predefine the template for our LA first. That means that you can always click print to preview on our LA before we do any editing. So let's say if you want to even further amend on the clause for the LA, we can always click edit to go inside. So this will be the same part, the same benefit. Whatever reports, even the LA that you've done in the system, we can always submit for the e approval through the system as well. That's why from the LA module, And we can see all the clause. So if we want to amend, we can further click to amend accordingly and save again and submit for the approval. So once it's get approved, then we can print out the LA actually pass the contractor for sign up. So this part will be the tender evaluation. So let's say the tender has been awarded but in the post-contract stage. Allow me to open another project which is already in the post-contract stage so we can see more features, what we can do when the project is in the post-contract. So take for example for this project, which is already in the post contract. Whenever the project in the post contract, when we click inside, so this again, we can see the to-do list within this project, how many reports that pending for our approval. If we further scroll down, so we can see there's a pie chart here. It will represent how much will be the contract sum and also how much will be your approved PO amount. And actually all this info will be auto tabulated out calculated by the system because we have the BQ from the back end. So whenever your, your consultant QS or even your colleagues, they update for any VOs or even the pro progress claim, the system here will auto tabulate up, represent in the dashboard. If you further scroll down, then we can see that's a project schedule cost information. It will represent the S curve information and so on. And yes, of course, we can, all, um, we can always invite our project teams to come in to generate our gun chart, the s as well in the system. So let's say if we start with the change management, whenever we have the VOs, uh, if you want to submit the request for our VOs to our management, we have the module set, we call the request for variation. During this request for variation, we can always ask our consultants to come in to initiate the form and further get the approval from our management on the budget for the VOs. So take for example, if I open up sample, as a management, we always can re review for all the VOs RFV that have been issued from the system as well. Then we can see how much will be the overall cost estimate for our RV, proposed for how much, how much will be already approved and so on. So take for example, if I open a sample, Let's say for this RV number five, we can click inside. Whenever the consultant they want to issue the new RV, you can always invite them to come in to fill in for all this information, like the description for the proposed variation work, what's the reason, and even how much will be the estimation cost. Because for our consultants, even our colleagues can come in to uh, come up with all the breakdown details with the cost. And of course, all this information we can submit back to the client, which means the client side, the project owner side, and the system will auto calculate out, come up for this <clears throat> table with so called the financial standing. Then we represent how much will be the percentage variance for this one. And another part is the good thing is for all the RIV, let's say we submit through the system, we can always submit for the approval as well. That's why at the bottom part here, you will always come on the status who actually approved for this RV budget. 
And whenever we got the budget in the system for the RV, and of course, while we're consulting QS, they can always proceed to come up with the actual VO, we so called the variation order in the system as well. So for variation order, we can back to the build space pro. Under the build space pro, we actually have the module called the VOs, where for our approved budget for the RV, like just now this one, RV number five, we can always double click to mock up with the actual VOs breakdown. That's why we have the net omission and the addition to come up. So once your consultant QS already come up for all the breakdown, they can submit for another round of the approval as well. So all the approval actually will be done in the system. And we no need for the hard copy. And we can see the summary comparison, the budget for how much? 245,000. Your net omission addition for how much? And even the claim for the BO how much? And another good thing is, if we have all these VO to be consolidated in one single platform system, we can always review how many VOs are already approved. And if you want to share some documents, supporting document based on each VOs, we can always upload here. That's why you can see this one. We can always upload that like, our architect instructions or even other supporting documents to be recorded in the system as well. Easier for us to trace back for all the information. And another part is if we want to update for our BQ were done, our progress claim. At the top part here, actually it's our BQ. So for, for the user, if they want to update for any claim info, we can always open up for our BQ. Let's say for this element, we can always update based on the element, as in 90% completed. Or we can double click, update the claim one by one, based on the item. Let's say this one completed, 100%. And this one, the quantity or even the amount. The system auto calculate for you too. So basically, when it comes to the post contract management, we allow the user to update on the progress claim, even VOs, even for others. Um, contract management like the advanced payment materials that can be done in the system as well. So let's say whenever the claims information are really updated for this month, then we are ready, we are ready to to issue the payment certificate to our contractors. So of course, in the system, we actually have the claim certificate. This one, let's say if we print out, whenever we updated for our claim info for that one, then we can actually print this out. From this claim certificate, we are able to know how much will be the work done for this month, even for our VOs, for how much, and the system will auto calculate for you how much will be the retention sum, and the amount certified for all the details. And of course, for this claim certificate, we are able to submit for the E approval as well. That's why at the bottom part here, we are able to show on the verifier log who actually approved or who actually rejected this claim certificate. All the data, all the approval activities will be recorded in the system. And another part is the remeasurement. If the project is required for the remeasurement, can be done in the system as well. We go to the remeasurement or items, then we can browse our BQ, let's say for this field. And let's say for the work below, we can double click and we can start to key in the new quantity under addition. Let's say after remeasure, this one 600. So whenever we key in the new quantity here, we back to a level, we are able to know on the summary. For this one, we are able to know the net omission addition. So another part is whenever the projects in the post contract, not only the claims, the VOs, or the remeasurement or the payment cert, for your project team members, they can actually come in here to do all the gun charts, as I mentioned just now, or the S curve. So if you want to do the gun chart or the S curve, we have the project management module. Let me open up for just now the project. So whenever project in the uh, post contract, then we can always come up with all the gun chart or the task list here. And the good thing is if we have our gun chart to be done in the system, we can always, for each of the tasks, we can always tap with the BQ description from our, sorry, for our contract BQ. That's why for each of the tasks here, under the build items, you are able to tap back from our contract BQ to come up with a more accurate 
mm, contract amount, the cost, and so on. So with all this information to be displayed accordingly, then we are able to generate the more accurate S curve from the system as well. So another part we would like to show you is, again, when the project is in the post-contract, um, we do have the QA, QC, the module in a bit space. So it means that whenever we want to submit, or for our set people, if they want to issue out the defect form, we can actually issue from the system as well. So that's why we have the set management module here. We have the defect module, where for our set people, <clears throat> they can always come in here to initiate the new defect form, or if I open up a sample for you, I say for this defect form, and the good thing is, whenever the order of our project members, uh, all the defect forms have been issued, you will always keep as a record here, so we can see how many defect forms has been issued, and we can always trace back, and we can see all the details here, who actually submitted for this one, and we can further respond. So based on this, we can always respond, um, put our comments, even snap any photos, upload into the system, even the respond in the accept, reject, or even back charge back to the contractor. Likewise, for the contractors, they can always submit the request for inspection also through the system to notify the consultant, even clients. So for contractors, they can always log to a system, log into the system to initiate the form called the request for inspection. So for this request for inspection, they can always issue to put in all the details on their submission, uh, the location, the initial works, and then they can always send to the consultant for the set relation request. So we can always request, uh, reply from here as well. So it means that all the data will be recorded in the system. So let us rec recap back just now what we showed here. Starting, if you manage our project, starting from the pre-tender stage, on the tender documentation preparation, and then call out the tenders, further invite our contractors to come in to submit their tenders, and then we do the tender evaluation. Even the post contract means all the project data will be accumulated in the project owner's, the client server. So it means that one, the, the call, the good thing for the client, for the clients actually, we are able to tabulate out all the project data into a dashboard format. As we can see here, under the dashboard, as what the Desmond mentioned just now, <clears throat> starting from the macro level, as a clients or as a top management, we are able to know for all the overall, all the projects in the system, how much will be the cost performance, like the, how much will be the budget, the awarded contract sum, or even the anticipated, the BOs, and so on. So we can further scroll down, it will show in the bar chart, all the cost performance based on the based on the work categories like your building works, hardscape, infra, and many and so on. And if for the scroll down, if you have the table form, you will display in the details or your budget for different work category, or your savings will be how much, and so on. Then we have scroll down, you will present in the bar chart, and even the overall certified payment for how much. All this data actually will be auto-tabulated out from a system, we don't need the user to help us to input for all this data. So we can ensure that all the data will be transparent and there's no aromatic errors when keying for all this data. And another part is, we have the subsidiary. Subsidiary will be the details level. Let's say if you want to view the cost performance based on the subsidiary, different town shape. Then you can filter from here. Then we can see the cost performance based on each town shape will be how much, their savings, I mean the bar chart, and the cost overrun, and so on. All this data, I mentioned again, will be auto tabulated up. And if you want the details, cost analysis, and then we, therefore, we have the, another module that we call the cost data module for the project cost data module. Under the project cost data module, since each project that we created in the system, we will have another set, if we have our own set of the cost data module, for each cost data module, we are able to come out the cost analysis for how much will be a budget analysis, the contract sum, even for your adjusted sum, means that anticipated VOs. And for all this info, you can see highlighted in the colors, 
starting from the scope level, from a sum summary level, which means the scope of works. If we drill down, we can up to the element level. Let's say for the architectural. And from the element levels, all this cost actually is referring back to just now the tanker package that we created, that we call out. That's why we can always browse to the project from which view, even which element, to select the cost from the contract sum, from the contract BQ, to be tabulated up. So let's say we already got all these uh, figures, the amount, and then we can bring forward to the summary level, then the system will analyze for us how much will be the cost, total cost per GFA for this project, let's say for the budget, even for the contract sum, even for the adjusted sum. And this is just a cost analysis for the one individual project. So if you want to compare with other projects when doing the project planning and so on, we can always click this button, comparison, and we can select which other projects cost data, and it will export in the Excel format for us to compare. So we can see the bigger details here for one project here. And we can see another uh, cost data for another project will be how much. Then we can compare side by side. So um, before I pass back to, back to Desmond, let me recap back for the system demonstration that we done just now. If we manage all our construction projects starting from the pre-tender, tendering until the post-contract, all the project data actually can accumulate in the server, which is very convenient for the client, especially the top management, to monitor on the projects, like the cost performance. And also, because for your consultants and even your contractors, will be assessed into the same platform to do their work, means that all the communication, even the document sharing, will be well recorded in the system as well, which will also reduce on the dispute. And so now, let us take a minute to answer the poll that we prepared for you to check which project management processes that you wish to digitalize in responding to the change of the current market condition. <clears throat> so let me share on the post. All right, so now we will have the Desmond Noy to share with us on how to enable the digital transformation and enjoy the grid savings with the build space and seal package. Yep, coming back, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for joining us on the, the poll. Then let me see how do I share the poll result with you. 
as you can see on the screen, I think it's quite interesting when when every most of the most of our friends right here that we're looking at. Uh, to digitalize the tendering and procurement because usually I think the the time that we spend on probably in tendering and procurement and progress claim and also the management reporting will be very very lengthy and by to be very honest in when if let's say we digitalize part of this process to be done in these veins then we will, we will save a lot of time writing in this sense yep okay so um and this is what ViewSpins is usually aiming to, to serve all the, our user and client because that is also to empower our colleagues at executive level to focus on individual responsibilities and the quality of the output of our work. And at the same time, we also support top management to focus on business objectives and performance. So we, we hope that through provisions of a total solutions and strategy partnership with our client, having a powerful system allows a cloud-based business system activities and safe repository for valuable information and data, then we will increase efficiency through process automation and ultimately we achieve digital transformation. So speaking about our support, the Space has a team, we call it Space Support Team. We, 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 we will usually help our client to achieve our digital transformation via these activities, including setting up the server and system, provide trainings and facilitate learning and for adoption, technical support during the, the entire implementation that will be online and 24-7, and continuous communications for improvement and also Eventually, and towards the end, then we will be able to achieve a long-term goal through very, very close collaborations. So long-term collaboration can be realized and reinforced through our Build Spain's digital transformation partnership with our clients. So uh, for the time being, we're looking at uh, to, to work closely with five to 10 developer clients to, to work on our R&D. And in return, our partners can also enjoy a greater savings on subscription cost and they are, then our client's input and SOP might first be considered when designing our new modules and to also allow our clients to use it for free because each of the client will be entitled for 10% of referral incentive rebate. Uh, I will explain all this in detail in by, by using PowerPoint slide uh, at, at the back here. Okay, so in terms of cost saving, our, our MCO package is really a good, a good bargain. But because our payment term has also been extended until July 15, so it sort of gives our client a commitment-free one-month trial to, to see how convenient if certain tasks were to be carried out in this space. So the MCO package comes with unlimited project and unlimited vendors as well as training, support, and ongoing project data migration. So for now, if you join us by June 15, which is 15 of June, the immediate saving our partner can actually enjoy is over 75,000 ringgit Malaysia because, because of free cloud server and upgrading cost for a limited vendor, which is a huge amount of money that we can save right now. And we're also with the setting up and implementation cost, which uh, has been, uh, has been part of the standard fee. So now when we owe this, then it is actually quite a good saving for, for all of us. And move on, we, we know it's important for a client to be able to work in, in such a way that um, maybe part of the team will have to work from home and another team will be working in office. That therefore we, we actually strategize our services to help our clients to go live on to go live online within 48 hours. And all this training to be done within a week and at the same time, quickly move the existing project data into the system for our clients to continue to perform and operate. Um, this project can be in pre-tender stage or post-contract stage. So depending on what other projects we want to, to use it in uh, build space. So um, we just want to share with you, this is what something that we prepare, a little chart to share with you on how much time can actually be saved in different work processes in various stages of development project. Um, actually, the biggest time savings is happening in tender stage, as you can see on the screen here, and also payment, 
payment stage and variations, and also most importantly, final account. Uh, we assume this is because when we actually discount all the traveling time required to collect and submit physical documents, and maybe also the time saving is happening on online approval, means there will be shorter lead time and quicker action can be performed and directly we increase the efficiency of the entire process. So when all the time savings being translated into dollars and cents, right? Um, each project can actually save us about 135,000, but that is actually based on some assumptions saying you have 10, you have 10 tenders per project um, for your foundation, main building, M&E, specialist, or NSC, all this thing. Then an overall saving per, per time uh, per project can be 135 over, over the, the entire project lifespan up. So if we plot the, the total investment and also annual average saving uh, against first year, second year, and third year with a little bit of assumptions, then um, the anticipated ROI will be actually represented in the, the graph that you have seen here. That will be, be, because all this thing, uh, all this thing is because our, our investment over time will be will remain uh, more or less the same. All right. So as in our pipeline for new modules to make our build space even more powerful to our users, we, we hope through partnership and R&D, we can also collect our users' input on development planning module. This is something uh, important for us where we're looking into to help our clients to start to plan our project ahead. And project management module, site management module, then uh, including all this defense that we want to uh, increase the, the usability and also the, the functionality of this module. And also most importantly, vendors pre-qualification module. So hopefully through all this collaboration, we can deliver something more practical and also at the same time adhering to our industry standards layer. So uh, another one, which is another uh, program that we are very excited to share with you is something that we call Build Space Referral Incentives Rebate Program. So Build Space Referral Incentive Rebate is for our partner or our clients. If your contractors or vendors sign up with Build Space, then we are honoring 10% of the transacted amount and to be credited to your subsequent subscription fee. So we have simulated a scenario whereby year two, if we have 150 uh, vendors that sign up with Build Space, then when the total sales purchase recorded is seven, uh, seven, 750,000, then 10% will be 75,000. So basically on, on third year onwards, then your subscription fee is actually uh, free. So right now I we have another we have another poll with uh we have another poll again then to take a look and if you're interested to register to becoming our our uh, digital transformation partner you can actually help us to put on some tick right here Of course, it is not big, no obligation. It was just uh, registering your interest and let us know how do you feel about the entire package. Then uh, we can actually discuss in further in detail. Oh, we see some votes coming in then. We will just spend another 10, 10 seconds or 15 seconds, then we'll just conclude this poll yet. <laughs> At the same time, if you have any questions um, directed to us, then you can also post it right here. Then uh, we have answered a few just now, but uh, we will also read it out towards the end of this session, yep. So I will just close the poll. Thank you for the participation.
and so this is one this is some of our clients that already been engaging with Bill Spains for quite some time, especially like Amuda and then uh, PCM Surveyor. Uh, Surveyor Eng is actually on the line today with us as well. Then education institution will also uh, allow the student to, to complete the assignments and hope then also coursework by using Bill Spains. So all this while we, we have been doing this together with Mm, UM, Siki, URTM, and also UMP as well. So we would like to conclude the presentation today. Then we will go into uh, the Q and A session. Then I will start to look into all these questions. And uh, let me switch the the screen to to Zen for certain thing if we need to show online or huh? Okay. Let me open up some of the questions right here. Um, yep. Okay, so where questions say, would people know who has the access to which folder? Basically, basically client would not know who has, uh, sorry, basically client would know who has the access to the folder? But for consultant, they will only know uh, the they will only access the folder they are allowed to come in. All right. So next questions we have is: Can we import three D Revit model to build space? And how do we do you support .dwf file? Basically, build space allows all type of file format to be uploaded and kept in BuildSpain system, as long as we create suitable folders for these files. Um, however, this is only a, a cloud storage function, so here it doesn't really have preview and open function. Maybe on, on Zen screen, you can actually help us to show a little bit on our project document. Okay. Yeah, project document here. And in project document, this is how all the user actually upload their drawings into into build space. So in project documents here, we have this bean files. Sorry, then is that bean files? Yeah, we had a preset folder for bean model to be actually putting in. But in this case, if we really want to create new folders for different uh, consultant to put in their respective bean files, then we can actually click on options and then create create new folder. Just as simple as that. All right. Mm. Thank you, Zen. Uh, we have next question saying, our current practice is that tender opening is done manually by two nominated staff from different departments. So with e-submission, in, in this case will be e-tendering, how do we address this if our management exists of continuing this practice? All right, in, in this case, right, these two nominated staff can be set as verifier in build space. So only when both of them approve the entire process, then only the tender can be can be open. So uh, this is, as you can see on the screen here, that we can actually assign who can, who needs to verify before the tender can open. So we, we still give you the flexibility on how on to, to control the, the entire process to make it more transparent and also uh, fair to all the parties here. Yeah? All right. Um, let me see what are the questions that we have. Okay, where would all these e-documents be stored or client need to allocate cloud storage or local storage? Okay, um, in this case, there are two approach. Of course, the first one, as you can see on the screen right here, in every, every project information is stored either in tender document or in project document. So tender document is for all these drawings for tendering purpose but for project document it's it's where we use it to keep all my all the working drawings let's say construction drawings let's say uh km drawings bp drawings or drawings that we use for our co-system media so in in this case when it comes to cloud storage or local storage or that depends if let's say client today they engage on build space and come on board with us, then they decide to use cloud server. Then all the drawings will be kept in server, in, in cloud server. But if let's say clients today you would like to 
you would like to maintain all your data to be kept on premise, which is your physical server in your office, then all this information will be also kept in the server. That depends on what are the arrangement and configurations we we are we are how to say we are dis, um, we are choosing in this sense. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, let us see. Is there any questions here? Did the contractors we invite need to have the same system for tendering, or they can just fill in tender by the given by the link given? Yeah, uh, tenderers or contractors they do not necessarily need view space because what we can do when it comes to tendering, like Zen show you just now, there is this BQ editor in view space where our our tenderer can actually come in and start to do their pricing. So. If your if your tender does not have, uh, if your tender does not have, uh, view space, then they can actually click on the yellow button here, on the, yep. So this is BQ editor. So contractor can actually come in here to do their pricing. Or if let's say your contractor has view space pro, so what they need to do is just to price in accordingly and import it back to view space. So either way will be fine. So there is no mandatory. Yep uh hi one last question you can ask a lot of questions no, no problem <laughs> one last question if we intend to purchase are uh, the purchase include dedicated support either remote on site okay uh support will be uh online okay but if let's say your office is in clan valley then of course we we can we can travel no problem but we still have to follow sop la. so you have to advise us of your company sop when it comes to visiting your office and of course we will wear masks and take our temperature at the moment. I, I believe this is what we're doing now when we visit clients office, but any other, let's say any other thing that have been scheduled, then that can be done online. Then we can actually look for, look into, uh, we can actually opt for that as well. That means our trainings and presentation and even setting up can all be done online. This shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Um, next questions we have is, is tender required to submit form of tender in hard copy? All right, there are two ways to go about that. If you're okay without a hard copy, then that should be fine. But in this case, for clients as a developer, last time, last time when I was a QS and when we call tender on online and all this e-submission, because of this uh, bank check for tender deposit and also documentation fee or even sometimes earnest money, then we were still involving a submission of hard copy. That means that it's a check. So we will still ask them to, to submit their form of tender in hard copy. But in this case, from the way that I look at it, then maybe it is not mandatory. So that depends your, on respective companies, SOP on how to deal about that. Okay. Yes, uh, as for the form of tender will require signature. So in this case, if let's say our SOP requires a, a contractor to, to sign on the form of tender, as you can see on the screen here, we have this print form of tender, where what, what we need to do is just to tell our tender, say you need to print out, sign, and then submit together with whatever check that we requires for them from them in this case. Okay. Um, Any payment gateway in corporate for tender fees? In this case, on bill space, we don't recoup any payment uh, for for any access because in this case, in, we are, um, how to say, the setting up is like the, the contractor or tender is actually assessing or coming to client's premise or client server to do their pricing. That's why as far as tender documentation fee or administration fee is concerned, uh, we, we, we don't charge your tenderer, we don't charge our clients tenderer. So that depends on respective clients SOP and also the practice. All right. Any more questions? Because the last one that I have on list is uh, one, of, one of you say thanks for the response and thank you very much. And If no lie, if no, then I will just uh, put it into black and white, then I will just email whatever question that you ask right here, then I will just compose an email, then I will reply to you privately to your inbox. Like, yeah. So with that, I thank you very much. Thank you, Zen, to be online together with us. And I.
there will be another session next Wednesday. Then uh, if you can see from the handout there, you can actually download the handout uh, from this webinar. So one of the handout is about the introduction of Build Space. Another handout is uh, our webinar invitation. So that means we still have another section. If you think hey, uh, this is quite informative, then you would like your friends to join us, then they can still register for the next uh, Wednesday session. Then it, with that, I thank you all of you for joining us and spending your time and give us, give us the feedback. Appreciate that. Then um, until we meet again, please stay safe. Then thank you so much. Bye-bye.